Hello. We're live. Hello. Hello. We're live. Hello. We're live. Hello. 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 We're live. We're oh. live. It's out of my way. Hi, guys. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, Greenie. What up? Hi, Greenie. Hey. Are you still with us? You going to stay with us, girl? I'm going to hang with you guys. Yeah. All right. I'm ask you questions that people have uh, okay. submitted. All right. This Q and A session. How's everybody doing on this fine Sunday afternoon? Doing good. It's uh, good. hot here. Pretty good. Hot here in LA. I'm schwitzing out hotter. here too. 118, <laughs> but you know who cares, right? We've had yeah. some tropical storm action, which I've been loving. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's thunderstorming here. So if uh, all of a sudden we're gone, <gasps> oh. it's because of okay. that. Yeah. But we should be good. Wow, Not that's too great. Crazy in Indiana. How you doing, T? I am doing great. <laughs> but yeah, it is hot. Yeah. She's a hot one. She's a hot and toasty one. All right, yeah. you guys ready to dig into these questions? We've got a oh, yeah, sure. I've been waiting. I could barely sleep. Really? Right it's like Christmas, <laughs> waiting for Santa Claus. <laughs> um, okay, the first one is just very sweet. It's from Rick Westfall. And he said, how much do I love you? Uh, love you guys. Oh, Hint this much? to the stars uh, and back. Oh, very sweet. Is that a question? Well, it was, but he kind of answered it too. Okay. So. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? Kind of how much do I love you? Exactly. That's where I was going. We sing the songs at the same time sometimes in the same key, right, Janice? Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. First is from Karen Myatt. She says, Hi, today is my birthday, and I'm watching you. Uh, watching you on today's live chat is my special birthday treat. Hey, okay. happy birthday, Karen. Happy birthday. Okay. Happy, happy. Um, question for all of you. When it is truly safe enough for everyone to be out and about uh, and go anywhere and do anything, what is the first special thing each of you would like to do? So I'll start with Cheryl. Or Charla, as I'm Charla, known. I'm sorry. Actually, you know, Zoe <laughs> picked that name for me. And that would be my answer. I'd go hang with Zoe, and she loves to go to Big Sur. So she and Evan and I'd probably drive up to Big Sur. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What about you, Al? Um, I think uh, I'd like to go to um, Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, Hawaii. We missed Hawaii this time. So I think uh, take uh, Angela, Ariel, maybe we'll and pop over to, to Hawaii. Mm. That sounds mm. heavenly. Conehead? <laughs> yes. Um, there are two things. I'd like to go to Sardinia immediately yep. and hang out with Nani Zeta at his beach house for <laughs> 10 days. And secondly, I'd like to go uh, meet up with my son and his fiance and be there when they get married, get, get them married somewhere together. Yeah. Russia? Where, wherever, wherever. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I think my first big thing will just be to go to a concert. Mm. A nice, well, it doesn't mm. have to be big, but just feeling safe in either a large or even just tightly packed small concert just to see go 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 to live music with a lot of other humans mm -hmm. sounds, mm -hmm. i like that actually that's great yeah, yeah. Oh, that would well be awesome. i hope that hope it, uh, that that i hope that happens soon oh yeah uh, gonna be a minute it's gonna, gonna be, be a minute yeah. it's gonna it's, be a lot of minutes yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sigh. All right, less sigh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are they over here on the right? All the chat things. I don't see. Um, yep. If you just click over on uh, comments at the top there. Well, thank you. There you go. There we go. There you Hi, go. Hi, everybody. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, Mac Reed has a question for Janice. Where did you get the nickname Cone? <laughs> ah. Oh, what would you like to know? Oh. Oh uh, well, let's see. Where do I begin? I. It, it really happened. It happened. She was birthed at a time of extreme stress in the studio. We were doing Bodies and Souls, and it was getting stressful towards the end. And to, to sort of uh, it, calm myself, I was started doodling. And I would doodle this cartoon character named Baby Conehead. And she only had one arm. And she 
always had a slogan on her T-shirt, and she always had a drink of something. It didn't have to be alcoholic. And she uh, she looked like a combination of Judy Jetson and, uh, I don't know, Zippy the Pinhead. And then, then she sort of came to life when we were doing a tour where we had to wear the spacesuits in the, in the uh, show, and then I had a solo right afterwards so you guys could change. So I had to figure out a way to make it believable that I was wearing this spacesuit. And I also had like a triangle in my head and a <laughs> cone. I love that triangle. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I sort of got baby, I sort of adopted the name Baby Conehead as a kind of blues singer from outer space type of thing. But <laughs> she's, so that people started calling me Conehead, Baby Conehead, and then shortened to Cone. And she's, she's basically a cartoon character. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, all right. We have a question from Mark A. Davis for Al. Uh, oh, extra. It's more of a comment. I'm still looking for the right opportunity to bring you back to Idlewild this summer mm. or in the summer. I think yeah. a lot of a lot of everybody's summer plans have been kind mm. of uh, yeah. shifted and changed around. I know Trist was teaching this past week, but virtually, right? Yeah, there's a camp that I uh, kind of the acapella academy that I work at every summer. But my main role there, while I do some teaching here and there, my main role is to be like the live sound engineer. So my job was affected the most greatly, but I was still in on some teaching and everything was virtual. So it was uh, it was it was pretty great. I was pretty amazed with what the students and teachers were able to uh, put together. It wasn't the same as being there, but it was way better than not having it at all. So. Right. Well, to, to answer the question, um, hey, Mark, how you doing? Um, I would love to come back to Idlewild. I enjoyed it so much. Uh, for those that don't know, Idlewild, California, it's all the way up in the mountains. They have a wonderful school there, uh, mm -hmm. uh, School of the Arts. And I was up there for a couple of weeks in the summer, and I was uh, teaching uh, vocals. We uh, had a group of uh, kids uh, doing uh, singing, and then we put them together with the big band, and it was fantastic. So uh, I'll give you a call, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everything went cool. Uh, Trist? Yeah. It's yeah, all it done now, huh? Yep, it went it's great. Finished up? It went great, yeah. yeah. But it, it, what, it. what you've learned, though, is it's possible to still be teaching and, and, and singing right. and virtually. And yep. I think, Sylvia yeah. and Jan, you guys both have private students you're teaching yeah. right now, too, right? Yes, and I'm, I'm going to participate in the Songbook Academy on Thursday, which is something I've done before. It's uh, Usually I would go to Carmel, Indiana. And too, work yeah. With, yeah, and work with students live, which I much prefer. But yeah, cool. we're, we're going to give it a try uh, virtually. I have a student in Peru, one in Hong Kong. I'm going to do a Japan workshop, and I have two n new young students in Northern California or Northern Northwest. Mm -hmm. So it works, you know, one on one. I yeah, can't one on one, right? Really works well. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know how you do a group. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's good to. It's just good to know people are still singing and people are still yes. able to keep performing and getting that out there. You, it's can't, awesome. you can't stop people from singing. No. <laughs> no. And they've tried. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, CB, question for you. Are you more of a Grace or a Frankie? <laughs> this is well, you Matt know, Reed. okay. First of all, I know every episode of every season. I pretty much know the dialogue. I go back and forth, you know, I, I think Frankie is a hoot and she's really the artist and Grace is the disciplinarian. So it's kind of a combo. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to be more of a Frankie, but Janice and I are the Grace and Frankie of jazz, basically, too. <laughs> you know, so. But it's, you know, it soothes me at night. I'll just pick an episode and, and talk along with them. I, I, <laughs> It's it's an illness, but it's a wonderful. Illness. I did not it's know that show. about you. It's wonderful. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I knew you watched the show, but ah, uh, that's that's I deep. That's I love deep them secrets. so much. They represent a lot to uh, you know a senior woman here. 
living in a senior town. <laughs> That's me in Palm Springs. I think I'm the only one here under 75, 70. Ooh. I love it though. Mm. Hi, Rosie Eckert. Oh, hi, Rosanna, Rosanna. Nice. All right, question from Ray Larman. Any interesting stories surrounding a foreign affair recording? Rehearsals. Oh. oh, yes, there are. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> Janice? Um, huh. In the studio recording it, do you remember who conducted us? <gasps> Claire Fisher? Yes. And do you remember yes. what he was wearing? Nothing. Oh, I remember what he was wearing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, he, he was shirtless. He had pants on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And we were we recorded that uh, we uh, in Jay Graydon's garage, and it was really really hot. Okay, so yeah. Claire, I was going to ask. Claire took his shirt off. I think he was preening a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was inspiring, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jay Graydon's uh, the studio in the old, in the old house. Um, he uh, he had one bedroom uh, was. Uh, the studio where he worked, he had everything where he was working. And then in the garage, he had uh, transformed the garage into a uh, recording booth. So we were in there with all of his uh, um, planes. You know, he used to fly planes a lot and stuff like that. The model planes. The model planes, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember uh, Claire, yeah, Claire Fisher was something else. But we absolutely, he absolutely helped us. I mean, we couldn't have, you know, just to have somebody conduct us was really yeah. good. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, Yari Salama, Jari Salama, I, I apologize for butchering names. Um, what do you consider together or individually the most exotic country site venue you've performed? Mm. Yikes. We oh. we performed a lot of exotic venues. Yeah, go ahead, T. No, you you have you've run ex more exotic venues than I. Exotic <laughs> venues would be one of your domain, not me. I think. Wow, you guys start. I'm, I'm stumped. <laughs> uh, well, what comes to mind was a quarry, I think, in Italy, Carrara. Yes. yes. Yeah, and then there was some place in Sweden that we we were on an island. Kind of, I think that was also a quarry. Uh, that was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and uh, you know, the Kremlin was pretty cool. And uh, I mean, any any city in Italy where we played in the middle of town was yeah. pretty great, also. Yeah, anything you can remember, Al, or it's just Cheryl? Um, well. I remember playing in Phuket. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. And that's that was, what I was trying to think. That of. was kind of a trip because Phuket is so, such a gorgeous place, you know. But um, gets a, a little funky too down in the, down in the city. That was I remember that. I remember playing in Malaysia. Yeah, in Guala, 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 Guala. Yeah. Uh, That was pretty exotic. Um, uh, we played Hobart, Tasmania, and yes. yeah, we, we actually saw there. Tasmanian devils there, actually, that somebody had as a pet. Speaking of Tasmanian devils, your own Grishovsky is watching. Uh-oh. Hey. <laughs> the cat was hey. awesome. I have the a question. was awesome. Hey, Yaronsky. Yes, CB. Question. Was Phuket where I took Zoe when she was a baby? Oh. And there was an elephant in the lobby? Yes. 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 There was a baby elephant in the lobby. Yes. Kind of outside, but it was the lobby of the hotel. So that was crazy. Also, I have one. You guys got to remind me where this was. We played in a shopping mall, an outdoor oh, shopping that was, mall. That was Milan. Oh, yeah, outside, oh, outside, of, outside of Milan. Of, That's yeah. pretty crazy. It was nuts. It was like what are we doing here? No time to shop, unfortunately. Well, I think I made time to shop. 
that was that, where it was like a it was like a stream going through the yes. whole outdoor mall and matt was running sound on this bridge <laughs> and it was like yes. he had a private show because the audience was alongside the stream and it was just <laughs> matt on the bridge that you guys were looking at straight yeah. on that was that wasn't exotic but it was crazy yeah, so. yeah. t you got one i mean i wow yeah i've done similar things um once in my former group impact we sang at uh basically the singaporean white house mm. uh, oh, wow. istana Ooh. istana uh there that was interesting um but yeah some similar things some a few uh something also in uh korea where i think we were on a stage and the stage was in a river and the people were all on the shore <laughs> on the other wow. side of the river. So we access it, we get all, you know, you take the little ramps and then you're on a big platform in the middle of a river. Crazy. And the people were, and, and, and the people were on the other side. That was odd. Lots of mental like, wow, what could get messed up? It's like, well, those speakers could go tumbling in. Uh, those people could go tumbling in, etc. So it was, uh, that was a little interesting. I have another elephant story. Ooh, <laughs> and I wonder in New, Ar if in, in New Orleans at the park. Oh we, my God, yes. yes. We came in on elephants. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> while, the band, did. while the band played Caravan. <laughs> yes, boys, boys on one right and girls on the other. Yes, elephants. Yes. And there were rats. There were rats, there were rats, rats all over oh, down rats. in front of the stage. Yeah, and it was like 500 degrees out. <laughs> And John Hendricks was with us. Ah! Was John on that gig? Yeah, John was on that gig. And then we went to hear the Dirty Dozen. Yes. Um, yeah, I remember that. People oh, had yeah. a change of clothes to this dance party. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they were so sweaty for yeah. being so Oh, hot. they were so oh, yeah. They were so And dancing. Hot and humid. Oh, man. New Orleans, you know. Oh, New Orleans. A lot Great. of elephant stories. So that was good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, okay, let's see here. The follow-up question for that is, are there any places and festivals you would still love to go and perform? All of them. Yeah. <laughs> Montreux, oh man, please. Where, I wish, um, I wish. Where have you guys not traveled to that you would want to? This is my question. Africa. India. Peru. India yeah. is good. Yeah, India. Yeah, yeah, pretty much the same, all those places. How about Antarctica? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would be really cool to go. I want right. to go I want to go inside Antarctica though, you know. <laughs> I want to go where all the uh, uh, you know, UFOs are. <laughs> <laughs> that's where if I I were to go to Antarctica, that's what I would want to do, you know. Excellent. Or I all, all I the wanna, secret see the secret that are there. Space stations? Oof. I would want yeah. to play with the penguins all day. Yep. Oh, you can do Iceland, that in South Africa. Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe wow. I would marry a penguin. I don't know. <laughs> if it was right. If it felt yeah. right. They're pretty They're much for little. life, you know. They find a. Uh, yeah, they find. I don't a know if it would work life. out. I think you travel too much. You know, for them. <laughs> you got to You got to be there. You can put them in your carry-on. <laughs> oh, right. This is the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right um catherine mckeever asks i'd hey. like to know catherine hi catherine. Uh, i'd like to know what's the single worst experience you've ever had on the road yeah. you don't need you don't need to in, uh divulge exactly where it was but everybody asks about the best place you've ever played or where you'd like to go again so i'll ask the opposite Show us that it's not always glamorous. Oh. Oh. How about oh. rarely glamorous? Um. Janice, I bet you. Well, can I start out? I please mean, start, we. Please start. Not yes. glamorous. Uh, that's, that's a good topic here because we said we'd talk about anything. So here it goes. Uh, <laughs> we played, you know, we when we had our babies, they were very small. When, you know, we'd go out back out on the road, Janice and I and uh with our babies and uh we were nursing and <laughs> i can recall we were playing in a tent an outdoor tent 
it was a festival of some sort and we're backstage, which there really wasn't a backstage. We were on the grass and, and we're sitting there, you know, basically nursing into these machines. Not right. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of, that was kind of messy, <laughs> but very real, you know, things that people don't know, you know, so. Yeah, you, you yeah. gotta, gotta feed the babies. Gotta feed those uh, babies. I mean, we've we've mentioned this story before we, when we played with an orchestra that was drinking all day, <laughs> <laughs> and then they Sizzling. were playing violins, so that was bad. Yeah, <laughs> um, we played in uh, Hunan, China, and the theater that they picked. I don't think it, it had been open. Uh, like for 20 years <laughs> and we went in and they had no equipment. I remember the guys uh, were, were putting stuff together with, with tape and trying to just get everything to work. And I remember it was just a very bizarre experience uh, playing there. And that was when we went to this uh, um, animal market, right? Remember that? Yes, the live, uh, live animal market. The live yeah. animal market, you know. And uh, one side of it, they had pets, you know, that you could eat. get dogs or cats or whatever. And on the other side, they had animals that you could eat, like oh. dogs and cats <laughs> and, and everything else. Uh, but that was that was kind of a really strange experience in a way, playing there. Yeah. Well, it was it was a while ago. It, a while ago. Yeah. That was like 20 yeah. years ago. So. Yeah, and Sicily is always exciting, but let's not go there. <laughs> but well, Sicily, Sicily was with with the orchestra in the garb in, in the garbage uh, strike. Well, okay, yeah, that's a besides from other stuff. That, yeah, but uh, I still like Sicily. I oh yeah, that. the best food ever. I love Sicily. I love Italy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, miss it, miss Italy very much. Yeah. Yeah. T, you got any horror stories? Um. Wow. Like not, not to that degree. There's there's probably a variety of things similarly where you show up and the stuff just isn't ready or they didn't quite understand what you needed. Um, again, I go back to my you know being in an acapella group before this. Sometimes it's like, oh, well, you're just acapella, so you know, what do you need? You know, like <laughs> it's like, well, you still have to hear us, right? It's still <laughs> a two thousand seat place. <laughs> You know, like, so sometimes that kind of thing would happen more early on as we, you know, where it would be 25 years ago this summer that we started. So it's a little more of a thing nowadays, a few more popular groups, people understand a little bit more how it works, the sound people and stuff. But back then, you know, um, a sound engineer would, a sound company would get a rider. They wouldn't even read through what you requested. It, they just saw, oh, you're a five guys acapella. Cool. We don't really need anything for them. And. So they would definitely under under plan. So that that kind of stuff would happen gear wise all the time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Um, we have a question from uh, Shayla Gunter Goldstein for Trist. She wants to know how you organize the music on the walls behind you. <laughs> oh, it's a very special. Very special system. No, Many of you, really? You've, you've probably all seen um, High Fidelity, the movie, where he takes everything and he has he's constantly redoing it and stuff. And um, the method I've chosen is uh, the alphabet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Clever. It's the only way I would find anything. Because even if I said, ooh, if I wanted to put them in styles, you know, two weeks later, I would forget what I considered that artist. Wait, did I put them in that style? Or in that, so even, no matter what, I think the only thing I have actually separated out is the classical music. That's about it. Everything else is just Alphabet alphabetical work. by artists. Yeah. It's the only way to do. Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do it a little different. Yeah, I have male vocal, then I have female vocal, all alphabetically, and then I have uh, vocal oh. groups. I have uh, early vocal groups, uh, doo wop vocal groups. And then I have uh, jazz vocal groups, and then I have pop music. And I have jazz. Yeah, I go that way. It's like a record store. Yeah. Binary boxes. 
But see, then if I had, but then if I had Mel Torme yeah. in the Mel tones, I oh. wouldn't remember if I had it That's in right. the Mel male Torme. vocal or if I had it in the vocal groups. So would you see? put it under Mel Torme or would you put it under the Mel? Well, it doesn't matter. It's exactly. So M. I mean, I guess at the worst, you would have just two places to look. So that's not so bad, I guess. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Question from Trish Gerber. Yeah. Hi, Trish. She's my She's, bud. Yeah. She asks, um, what is your secret to bringing such genuine energy to every song you sing in concert? Uh, she feels like it's a brand new experience, even after seeing you guys time and time again. Oh. Hmm. Well, I'll start out. You know, with four people, it always sounds different in some way, in some form. You know, and the songs are, you know, they're complicated. And for me, they always come out different, a little bit different, you know. And with the blend, it's always, it depends on the sound in the particular theater, you know, but the energy, you know, it just sparks us, you know, you come on there, you could be in a, in a funk, but the minute, I don't know, the minute I get on stage with my partners, it's like, bam. And one other thing that I've been told, and it's a good thing to remember, these people bought tickets months ago. This has been their big moment, their big entertainment. It's another, you know, it's another gig on the road touring with us. But when we come out, it's like, oh, they, this is their show that they've seen all year or something. You know, it's the most special thing to these people. So we got to, you know, remembering that I think keeps it fresh too. So guys, please. Yeah. Um, you know, we, uh, no matter how we feel before we go on, if somebody's not, you know, is under the weather or something, as soon as you hit the stage, that's it, you know, um, we were performers that's what we do you know and we feed off of the energy with the audience i i find it hardest when you go out and you can't see the audience i love to be able to see them and have contact with them you know to be able to uh, that really helps with with the energy you know but it's just what we do we've always done that i think we go out there and give 150 percent no matter how we feel you know yeah. Yeah. The answer is in the question a little bit. You just uh -huh. that that's what you do. You 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 do your best. And like Cheryl said, not only have they maybe been looking forward to that, but for me, being someone new, I'll still have folks I might meet afterward that say, finally, after X number of years, I've been listening to you. This was the first time I got to hear you live and in person. Yeah. So you never know which show is someone's first time they ever heard you. And yeah. you wouldn't want that one yeah. to be like the off one. I mean, sure, there's going to be some variance of inconsistency where whatever just happens and happens, but you're just always striving to just do the darn best you can, you know? And I think doing the best you can means being in the moment, uh, not being on auto. I mean, sometimes it's really hard not to be on autoplay because of, of fatigue, jet lag, um, maybe you're not feeling well, but to really be in the moment means you're reacting to the chords and the immediacy of the this fresh new audience and what the musicians are playing behind you and you're reacting to it in real time. To me, that that keeps it fresh because that's an energy that you that is very powerful. Being being there, being there, being there, mm. which is part of why we miss this the most. <laughs> The yes. Doing it in the moment live with other humans is the thing, no matter what, we can't replace until we can go do it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Good question. Great. Yeah. Question. Thanks, yeah. Trish. Um, the next one's from Daniel Kramer. Yay. Hi, Daniel. Hey, um, Daniel. He asks, or he says, some tunes are naturally more demanding, either physically, emotionally, or both. Is there a specific bugaboo tune for each of you that is hard to get out as you move through a set? And what strategies do you have? Or to get out? You mean out of our mouths? <laughs> well, I mean, you guys construct the set a lot of the times with certain songs that you're like, oh, I don't want to do this too early in the show and, and uh, you know, uh, things that you need to warm up for and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Are there any songs, though, that, that are, I like that word, bugaboos? Well, 
I think each of us has difficult, maybe if difficulty in what in specific songs because of range or if they're not warm, you're not warmed up for like like opening the show with Birdland, for instance, ah! is hard. It's We've done hard. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Some songs you have to open up your voice for, and then uh, some songs are challenging, like like the man who sailed around his soul, for instance. I got I got to be a hundred percent focused for that. <laughs> I'm sure you do too, T. But just because of the harmonies and the dissonances yeah. and the rhythm of it, you know, I yeah. find that chal challenging. I would call it challenging, not a bugaboo necessarily. But I love the word bugaboo. For me, it's like you know something like cantaloupe. It's like no, no, no. Don't put it in the set. Put it like at the end. You know, because those are, you know, we all have our different songs that we need help with vocally in terms of warming up. So I agree with Janice. It's like we, if we got to start, we start not easy, but we start in, in a comfortable place in our voices, you know, so yeah. we can warm up into it. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, we always uh, uh, work on the set, you know, before the show. So it's it varies it, it, it you know and and we I think we have an instinct in terms of of how to pace the show you know the ebb and flow of a show you know because for us it's uh, it's like taking uh, the audience on a on a journey a musical journey uh, yeah I, it's challenging sometimes for me because you know I sing the tenor part and uh, I'm a baritone. So there are some things that are just difficult, you know, to to wrap around, especially if we've been doing a lot of shows, you know, then it just uh, it gets a little harder. So we we adjust. It all depends. Yeah. Like Al said, it's like it's like the whole show is almost like a song you're composing. You want to have the ups and downs and it's like a whole composition almost that you're presenting um, by itself with a lot of movements in it or something like that. Um, for me, it's um, similar to similar to Al having a lower voice, and um, most of this music wasn't arranged with my particular voice in mind. So I'm having to sing in an upper part of my range that I hadn't done as much before. So there's certain ones that are higher and sit right in my upper kind of break, where you know a song like Candy, I'm very high in my voice. Um, not to mention the fact that um, I learned when I got in the group that I don't actually sing the bass part, I sing the tenor part. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> what? And it made me say, oh, wow, Al, you know what? You can keep singing the tenor part in all the other songs. I'll do this one. No, um, but uh, so that's difficult. And it depends on what comes right before it. If the wrong song is right before it, it's harder ah. for me to access that place in my voice. Um, so it's been, it's been an interesting learning experience to figure out. Just look at the list and go, oh, wait, guys, I really need to not do this song before that song. But there's only a few little places. So. And on that same subject, I don't know if our audience knows this, but from song to songs, you know, we're, we're all over the range. You know, like there's some that Janice sings the lead and I'm an alto. You know, Alan goes real high and then he goes real low. It's it's really we're a re we really challenge ourselves in that sense from song to song. It's vast, you know, the range of our it's voices. Very, yeah, very very demanding. What we yeah, do, yeah. You know. well, we, we had a voice teacher once, Roland, who said, "What you guys doing is impossible. Um, <laughs> you you can't do this." <laughs> So we said, okay, well, we're doing it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah. And then you warm up with him every night. Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, hearing hearing, it, yeah, hearing it's something you can't do is all the motivation you needed, right? Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, now we know we're on the right track. Someone told us we can't do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. We have uh, somebody here that is asking about soul food to go who really wants to know, uh, where's his name? I lost it. Uh, da, da, da. He's asked five times now, Thomas Gracia. He wants to know who was responsible for the iconic Soul Food To Go video. Who came up with the claymation idea and that whole concept? Uh, that was done by Bud Schetzel was his name. And Bud uh, also did our vocalese videos. Uh, and he came up with that idea, you know, of the claymation, yeah. Great video. I love 
yeah, you know, when I saw that, I think um, when all of us saw it, we went, whoa, that's fantastic. <laughs> That was just great. But that's how, you know, we had worked with Bud uh, before on a lot of uh, different things. And uh, that was his idea. That was his concept. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Let's see here. Bum, bum, bum. There's some long questions. Too. Yeah. Wow. You know, little, little books, little novels. Yeah. Uh, Rosanna Eckert asks, um, okay, what is the sickest anyone uh, was on stage under the weather performance story. Mm -hmm. I have one. I have one. Anyone else want to go first? Or? No, go ahead. No. I'll follow. I may not follow. Uh, in Sweden. Was it Sweden? Uh, no, it was in Copenhagen. I was in, it was before you were in the group, Cheryl. Um, we did a show and I was in such pain. I had, uh, well, I mean, as long as we're answering embarrassing questions, I had an IUD that that had moored loose, that just like left left <laughs> left the building and went wandering and caused mm -hmm. this raging infection called PID, and I was in such pain. And I I finished the show, got into a car with uh, I think our road managers at the time, and went and had emergency surgery in Lund, Lund, and wow. had a uh, laparoscopic, laparoscopic surgery right after right after the show. Yeah. Wow. So that's my And we story. went to Ibiza, right? And then we went to Ibiza so I could recover. <laughs> yes, thank you. That, <laughs> was, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. All yeah. right, next. Uh, I'll go next. Um, I remember the first time that we played in Australia and uh, we were coming from Japan and I got the Hong Kong flu and I was sick as a dog. I, I mean, I, and then we had to do a concert and mm -hmm. I remember it was, yeah, that was really tough. I had fever. I was, you know, my, hit my throat and everything. Yeah. Oh. Oof, that was enough. <clears throat> Was that was a new step. See, well, I could, know you've got. Well, I don't want to get detailed, but yeah. I, it was we were in Europe in 2011, and uh, it, I started getting weaker and weaker. I wasn't hungry. I was losing weight. I think you guys noticed that more than I did. I was like pinning clothes tighter to me. I went, "Wow, I'm looking good here." But at the same time, I was not well at all. And I remember the last show, Lori, we were back in the U.S. We were at a college, I think. Yes. We were in Long Island. Island. Yeah, well, Long in Island. Europe, they, yeah. they, Catherine Meyer got me like, you know, uh, uh, breathing machines. I was in my room breathing it. It would help for five minutes, get me high. And then I was like back down again. We didn't know. Nobody knew. I thought it was a bad flu. But then we got back to the U.S. and, and that college thing. And I looked at Lori and I said, I don't think I can do this show. And I was literally hanging onto the mic stand for the whole show. And then we got home. Alan turned, you know, set up an appointment for his doctor the next day. And there you go. It was full blown, uh, you know, cancer. So there you have it. And I was out for eight months. God, I missed you guys. It was horrible to yeah, be not on the road. Too. Wow. And then you guys had to work your asses off getting the Christmas show together with, well, yeah, with Margaret Dorn. Yeah, you had, that, was, what, that was a little easier than a regular show, luckily. Yeah, but, yeah. Know, we, so, missed you. we missed you a lot. So that was that was a illness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you guys, I would, you know, it was great coming back. I can't, I can't lie. I missed you so much. You were, it yeah. was phenomenal watching you. Like you, you would be so sick all day long like we laying down and laying yeah. down wherever you could and then all of a sudden you'd get on that stage and it was like nothing nothing was phasing you at all it was un unbelievable to watch actually i would because yeah. i remember yeah. at the blue note actually you were laying on the, oh, that couch God. that sparkly couch uh in new york and and oh. you just did not feel well and it was kind of at the beginning of it yeah. and you just got on that stage and you it was incredible like, yeah well like i said i did i didn't know it was wrong you know yeah. you don't think that 
thought, oh, God, I just got to get to bed. So yeah. anyway, yeah. end yeah. of story. T-Man. Well, oh, wow. But what, Al? But now you're all healthy. You got all new stem cells. I got right. all new cells. <laughs> yes, indeed. And they're happy. Yeah. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't really remember any particular one. I know there definitely have been a few where it's like same thing. You feel like I don't think there's any way I could go do this, and mm. somehow you make it happen. Uh, the aforementioned, you know, the show must go on, and you're just giving all you have, and you know, at least being in a group. Um, whether it's this one or my group before, at least there's other people to carry you. Yes. You can just tell guys, hey, guys, I don't think I can swing this and this and this. But if we avoid those songs, I think I can do the show, you know, yeah. and you just do what you can. And again, in the previous group, I was always singing bass. So it was a lot more relaxed. It needed a lower range of my voice. Um, you know, uh, I, I got away with a lot, <laughs> not feeling great and still making it happen. But. I can't remember anything in particular, any incidents or anything. I what? can remember you being oh. in Portland. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Remember your Blues Brother show? <laughs> See, because I don't think of that as being sick, but yeah, having pink eye will will do that. Um, <laughs> Crazy I, pink eye. Yeah, but and I didn't really know that that's what it was. It was just my eye was I'd never had it before, so my it was we were in Seattle, and then uh, the whole run in Seattle, um, every day it was just a little more red and a little more red and a little more red. And I just thought I had an irritation from my contacts. I was just wearing my glasses. And by the time we finished the show, finished the, the tour, we were down in Portland. I go to the doctor and she rightfully so as a health professional basically told me that I wasn't allowed to do the concert. And I was like, oh, wow, OK, um, well, that's not going to go down like that. But thank you for doing your job and telling me that. And so then I called Lori and just told her, OK, here's a deal. I'm not really supposed to be there, but what can we do to make me be there as little as possible? So everyone did the sound check without me. Um, our our great monitor engineer, um, Lefkowitz, Andrew Lefkowitz, was so great. He knew my voice well enough to say, OK, he set everything up. Um, then they even, because, you know, you're talking, you know, even before this germy germ thing we have going on, wanted to keep me away from everything. So I had a mic stand with a special mark on it so no one else would touch it. My mic was on a whole separate little table from everyone else's. Um, so mm -hmm. I didn't do the sound check. I arrived five minutes before the show in an Uber, went on stage, did the show, and then went right back to the hotel in an Uber. And then I also went, wow, could I just do it like this every time? That was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I never saw anybody's eyes as bad as yours. Oh. Yeah, it was funky, man. Yeah, it was, it was pretty. Awesome. And you, you were Blues Brothers. You went on stage with sunglasses. That's true. It's the only time I ever performed with sunglasses on. It, felt, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. It felt weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay, shifting gears. Uh, Matt Scheibel says, "I know you are all voracious listeners. Uh, as you continue to evolve." Which new artists are inspiring you right now? Who are you listening to these days? Uh, I'm digging this group called Moonchild. Very, very much. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. just re-listened re to uh, Nickelback. Are you familiar yeah. with them? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. they're fantastic, beautiful trio that Gary turned me on to, Gary Armstrong. So. Mm hmm. I don't think that's the name of them. What are they called? That's not the right name. Oh, is it? Nickel Black is like a 90s rock band. Oh, well, I played them last <laughs> night. Oh. Well, they're fun, too. The trio, the, the violin and the mandolin, and the guy is Nickel now... Nickel Creek. Nickel, Nickel Creek. Nickel Creek. Oh, yeah, Nickel <laughs> Creek. I know it was nickels or something or pennies. Or, yeah, they're Nickel great. Nickel Creek, right. Nickel Creek. Yeah, you know. Creek back. I like Hiatus yeah. Coyote, too. Yeah. I've been listening to them. Al, you got anybody? I don't listen to music. music. No. <laughs> right? I know. It's hard to do that right now. Uh, I, uh, I mean, wow. I have such a huge collection of music, and so I just kind of go through that, you know. But I, um, I go through waves. You know, uh, there are times like... Uh, when I was uh, writing, you know, I would listen specifically, uh, I was listening to a lot of electro swing music, 
Uh, and then I kind of fell out of that. You know, after I wrote uh, Swing Balboa, you know, then I, I kind of went, you know, beyond that. You know, so I don't know. I, um, yeah, I have a ton of, um, well, I don't have it here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get like that too. As much as I am a voracious listener, there are definitely periods where it's like, especially if we've just been on tour, um, you know, definitely have some periods of time where I'm really just not listening to music at all. You know, I defer back to my sports radio shows, et cetera, <laughs> podcasts. But um, yeah, those that group, Hiatus Coyote, I'd heard of them quite a bit, and I finally did a, a deeper dive on them uh, recently. That was so cool. And of course, Wolfpack. Still, of course, of course, we'll pick the, you know. the best. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love to do is I'll get on YouTube and look for a specific artist and then it takes you on a ride and then it'll take me somewhere completely different, you know, like Betty Hutton and then Francis Faye and then, you know, Kay <laughs> Tom. I was <laughs> trying to find Kay Thompson the other day and oh my God. And then you see films on there. So that's kind of my entertainment right now. That's I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of. Yeah, there is through YouTube. There is YouTube something radicals. to say about those about those uh, those algorithms and such that find similar similar things. And yeah, you go down a rabbit hole of whatever, and yeah. two hours later, you're like, "Wait, what was I looking for in the first place?" Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's fun. Uh, you, you can find some amazing stuff that way. It's a new world because there aren't just you know two or three outlets that all of us get the same entertainment from anymore. So right, That's you right. know, okay. So um, I take it back, and I do listen to a lot of new <laughs> artists. And, I, and how I oh. listen to them, okay, oh. is I do it through Shazam. Yes. A lot of times, you know, when I'm walking around and everything else, and I hear something, I'll Shazam. So uh, here's, like, some of the uh, people that I uh, – let's see. Uh, Mayor Hawthorne. Yeah. You know who he is? Very cool. Hold on. Very cool. Um, uh, let's see. He's the one that started making his own kind of R and B records, so he could sample himself and then do hip hop records with them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's, cool. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, but then the R and B records were so good, he just did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the soul uh, records were so good. David Douglas, Sia, uh, Sean Mendez, uh, uh, Calvin Harris, featuring <laughs> Pharrell Williams. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, wasn't he in the Alicia TV Cara? Wonder? What's that? I was going to say, wasn't Pharrell? Uh, wasn't he one of the guest performers at the Stevie Wonder concert we went to a couple? Yes. Of yes. Yes, he was. yes, he was. Yeah, killed it. Oh, oh my, my gosh. I know. Yeah. That, that was one of the best Christmas presents ever I've ever gotten. So. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. 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 It was one of my favorite Grammy moments, you know, when they always throw everybody together, all these kind of disparate people. There was one where it was like an anniversary for the Beatles, like a 50th year of them coming to America or something like that. And it was Sting, Vince Gill, Dave Matthews, and Pharrell yeah. was playing drums. Whoa. And they played, they played I Saw Her Standing There. I, think I saw that. Like oh any, my they're just God. like any pickup band of musicians could play these Beatles tunes, but it was so great to see those yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Nice. I'm you with you. Al. Just... Sorry, I'm with you, Al. I love the Shazam, and I have it linked to my Spotify. So I have a playlist mm -hmm. on Spotify that every time you Shazam something out in a restaurant or wherever, it puts it all in there, so you can you remember. That's what exactly. I, I have. That's what I do too. Perfect. Right to right to Spotify. Perfect. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. boom. Sorry, CB, I cut you off. No, I I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've got a question here from Eduardo of Rocho. I would love hey, to hear Eduardo. a story about the Junction song. Do the lyrics Ooh. reflect the group's work work ethic or motivation? Oh, that's for you, T. Um, well, it all kind of hit me at the same time that the whole concept of <laughs> it being being a new member and wanting to contribute and have a new sound, but have it sound the same, you know, have it be the same as it's always been. I want the listeners not to hear, 
oh, that's that new version of the thing. It's something totally different. So, um, and yet I can't do anything but be myself. So, um, and somehow just Tuxedo Junction being a classic song the group has always done. And I felt we were at a junction, a, a new junction in the moment of the group. And it all kind of came to me at once. Um, and I even told the group, I was like, I think that's even the album name, if I may be so bold. I just feel like that's this project. And so the song, so that was kind of the idea. Then it was just crafting crafting clever lyrics, whether it's based on like the group's history um, or even just a time in history, trying to make it not just all about us, but try to make it multi, my, multi-layered. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. perfect, you know, it was, yeah. <clears throat> And we all thought well, the junction, that's definitely the name of the record. So, oh, okay. And it's also going to be the name of the podcast, right? Yes. That's yes. Right. yes. Right. That we are working on that is evolving behind the scenes right now. Um, question from Tokyo, Tosh Shimazu. Uh, maybe you have many unreleased recordings and do you have plans to release them? He also mentions that Eastern time Two o'clock is four o'clock in the morning in Tokyo. So if you're Whoa. watching, oh, you're yeah. a rock star. <laughs> so we don't know if you're if you're up and you're actually listening to this, but the answer is yes. We have a lot of things, a lot of archival uh, material uh, that's in our vault, and we're we're going to be releasing it. Uh, we're uh, I've been busy copying over things and going through everything to see what we have. And yeah, so especially coming up now with the 50th anniversary uh, and our documentary, uh, we're pulling out a lot of, of stuff. So we're, we're, we hope that by next year, we're going to be able to start releasing them, you know, for, for uh, everybody. Yep. Yes. All those goodies from the vaults. All those yep. goodies, delicious, yummy, luscious goodies. Delicious, delicious. <laughs> Um, okay, we have a question from Yolanda Zorio. Hey, Yolanda. Oh. Hi, Yolanda. Hi, Jolly. Um, name something positive, if anything, that this quarantine has brought to your life. Hashtag resilience, hashtag self-discovery. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, hashtag. Well, I'll start. I mean, with all of the struggles and anger and grief and all of that that comes with this period of time, I found a few silver linings in that um, I'm doing yoga every day and I'm not going to stop that. Uh, it's, it's been an amazing focus for the mind and body. I mean, especially after sitting for a lot of the day, you know, to, to be able to uh, not have to suffer with back pain and mm -hmm. sitting on planes and carrying luggage. I didn't realize how much my shoulders were, were, were tightened up because of that. And, and carrying, uh, doing all my shopping, you know, walking around here, you know, carrying bags all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I, I've rediscovered, uh, I've had to learn how to use my studio again. So I've been spending a lot of time in my studio, which for, I mean, I prefer the studio more than anything, really. I, I, I grew up in the studio. I love the process that happens in there, creating magic and, and um, making it, sort of perfecting it, but also being spontaneous and getting that on onto the waveforms and, and having it for all time. You know, I love that process. So th that's been the silver lining for me. And getting to spend a lot of time with my son has been a blessing because I, he, he, he's going to be off soon at, with his own life. So this has been a very special time. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, for me, um, it uh, taught me how to, uh, you know, you can get by with a lot less. You know, and uh, this is the first time in years. I, I think it was, you know, maybe uh, before Cheryl joined the group. Uh, prior to that, there was there was a, a, a gap of some time off the road, but most of our most of the uh, of my life um, has been always with something in front of me. It's like okay. I got two weeks here. 
and then I got to go out again. Okay, I have uh, three weeks or something, and then I have to go out again. And so to be at a, at a point right now where I don't have to think about that is, uh, has been really uh, rejuvenating in a way. You know, I, I do uh, do yoga, I, do, I, I meditate, I've been doing it for 48 years, you know, so it's just a part of my life. And, you know, just the bonding to be able to be home and to, to spend time with, uh, you know, with family, uh, where it's not a rush, where you're not always trying to rush to go and do something, or you have this amount of time to, to kind of fill it. That, that, that's been an, um, an upside to this for me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll go next. It's, it's definitely strange. You know, it's, uh, I think it took me a couple of weeks to get off the couch. You know, I just sat there and I think I was like in a, you know, in a, I was just in shock. I didn't know what to do. Like Al says, this is like a first time we don't have anything in front of us right now. Uh, I too do yoga like every other day, which is a big for me. You know, I, I never did anything like that regularly because for me, being on the road is, is to, is, <laughs> You know, the corny phrase is irregular, you know, in a lot of ways. <laughs> so for me, uh, yoga has been great. I take walks every evening. It's a little hot here, but I wait till eight o'clock. Never did that on a regular basis. I, uh, I do a, a meditation class a couple times a week, and I really look forward to that. That's new to me. I do a couple of meetings on, on Zoom, you know, trying to get into that. And for me, because I'm kind of an isolator anyway. You know, you guys know this. So I thought, oh, I can do this. But it's it's very tricky for self-care. I'm painting. I'm painting my house. Nice. nice. I know. I pick a room. Let's see. Today I'm doing the bathroom upstairs. <laughs> I put new doorknobs on my doors. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was a huge accomplishment. I thought, I, I can't do this. And oh. I'm doing it. I also ripped a hole in my bathroom wall yesterday, which was unfortunate. I was trying to put up a towel bar. And it was loose, so I just took it off and a whole big hole in my bathroom. <laughs> but, you know, it's that I'm finding ways to entertain myself, you know. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's good. And I've been writing. It's crazy, you know. As I never thought of myself as a, uh, a consistent songwriter, but I've been writing quite a few lyrics. You know, two with Don Brightop, one with Bill Cantos. Nice. You know, one with Kevin Axt, I, hopefully. <laughs> You know, but it, it it's not, it's nothing I'm forcing. So you kind of, for me, I kind of have to wait. And then something in the air or my body tells me kind of what to do. And I just kind of, I'm flowing with it, you know. You know, so. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, very similar for me. Just, um, you know, doing day by day, like kind of going with the flow, having a longer plan. And yeah, it is weird to not have, that thing. Okay, I only have this much time to get this done while I'm at home. So um, that's been kind of nice and kind of helpful, but it's also it's also made me go at a slower pace, which is kind of good because some of the things I wanted to do around my place, you know, clean out, you know, that drawer or that closet that you just never got to, that you still that I still delayed getting to, but finally, okay, I'm gonna finally get this thing set up and get my get my studio better set up and just rearranging things and just taking the long way around it, but really deep cleaning stuff and organizing, uh, et cetera. So yeah, similarly, um, just, deep it is, cleaning? it is odd. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Do you Swiffer? Oh Ooh. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Swiffer. Yep. Yep. I tell you, I am a big Swiffer person. Also not only in LA where you just get that layer of LA on everything anyway, after a while, but I'm on kind of a busy street and I don't realize the effect of that until I wipe off the surface by a window and it's like, wow, that's a lot more black than I thought was going to be there. You know, Tell so, me about it. Ugh, that's the worst. So anyway, yeah, I'd, I'd always kept somewhat, you know, kind of tidy and, you know, the appearance of clean, but it's like realizing, oh, I haven't really dusted that for a while and I haven't really, you know, it's all of those things I've been trying to get to. It's a very slow process, and luckily I've had the time. Mm -hmm. All right, gangsters, we are at one hour. So I've got one more comment here uh, from Peter Spr Spring Spring 
Spring Inkley. That's a great last name. Just hard to say. Spring Inkley. Uh, we are seriously missing your touring. However, don't do it too early. Please <laughs> remain a role model and do not act too early. There's too much to lose. Well, well thank you. Pretty sweet. Amen. Yeah. Through that. And we have no choice. <laughs> we have we don't know uh when this is gonna let up um yeah so we just uh we wait and and see uh definitely we uh, don't want to take any risks we want to be safe we want to make sure that our audiences are safe you know the people that come to see us so i, I think we still have a little time with go, to go with this and we want to thank all of you out there that are that are, that are chatting with us this afternoon. Thank you for supporting us. Yes. We're hanging in there, and we're going to be back. So, look for us. Look for us on the interwebs and also in person live as soon as we can. Yeah. Thank uh, you, everyone. Thank we you. feel we feel you. We feel the support. So this is fun. It's fun to do it this way. Hey, I found a really good album. You want to see it? Ooh, you want to do a quick show and tell before we go? Oh, I, I didn't. Oh, I'm not. No. I'll, 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 I'll just <laughs> do one. Let's do that next time. Okay. Let's do it next time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As, a, as really, a teaser. Really, as a that's teaser. A teaser. Donna Michi. <laughs> you act, she, oh he acts God. scenes? I what? have one of those with Basil Rathbone. You can act a scene with Basil Rathbone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, you act a scene uh, with them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. Oh, that's why it's called uh, co-star. It's called co-star yeah. on the top. Yeah. Let's, do it. Let's yeah. act a scene with Don Amici next time. I think that's oh a my great God. idea. Now that I can get behind. <laughs> anyway. All right. Wow. We've got lots of plans and lots of great questions that we didn't get to answer. Yeah, but we sorry will, about that. We'll we will. It, uh, pick it up the next time. Yeah. See All you right. next time. Thank so, you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Be, be safe. You know, be well. Bye. We'll see you Bye. soon. Bye. Go for it.